Hey everyone, my name is Brent Colby, and I'd like to thank you for joining me as we take a close look at the Law of Addition. As we'll see here in just a moment, the Law of Addition is one of John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And what we're going to do here is take a moment to look at what he describes as the Law of Addition, figure out its guidelines, and even take a look at how we might apply the Law of Addition to our own leadership skills. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So as we just mentioned, today we're going to be looking at one of John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. If you're not familiar with John Maxwell, he writes a lot about leadership and team development, and this has to be one of his more popular books. In it, he describes, obviously, a series of laws that, if leaders can follow, will help them be more effective in their leadership. The big idea of this chapter is that leaders add value by serving others. As we'll see in just a moment, each and every one of these laws or guidelines for this particular law address how you, as a leader, can serve other people. And the concept is that by serving other people, investing into them, by honing your own skills to be considerate and thoughtful of other people, you will add value to them. Maxwell describes four main guidelines for adding value to other people. And you can see that we illustrate it here on this incline because as we continue to step forward along this process, we'll find that adding value to people becomes much more effective. And we'll also see that our influence over people with people get, uh, increases as we're able to do these things. The first guideline that Maxwell describes is by truly valuing others. Now, this may seem a bit obvious, but for a lot of us, this is the place where we do need to start. To actually value other people, of course, requires you to be able to see them first. And a lot of times we find ourselves maybe in a work or even a ministry environment where we're not really aware that other people are there, which is to say we may take for granted their participation or their involvement with our organization. So to truly value other people requires you first to see them, to acknowledge them, and to go out of your way to get to know them, as we'll go into more detail on step three. So that first step of truly valuing others is critical if you're going to even want to uh, express or engage in any of these other four steps. The second step is to make yourself more valuable to others. Now, this may seem a bit counterintuitive for the context of the chapter, but we can make ourselves more valuable to others by investing into ourselves or by making ourselves the type of leaders that are capable of investing into others. A lot of times as we start out in leadership, we find it difficult to know how to invest into others or what we could possibly do. And it requires us to consciously make ourselves more valuable to other people by developing skills, knowledge, uh, just relationships uh, with the right types of people and the right types of relationships so that we can be valuable to them. A lot of times you may identify someone that you would like to add value to, but you don't really have anything to offer them. And this, of course, really limits your influence over them. And one of Maxwell's mantras that we see over and over again is that influence is leadership. And inversely, leadership is influence. So if you want to be able to add value to somebody, you need to know what they want. You need to know how you can add value to their life. And don't assume that just because you're in a particular type of leadership position that you'll know how to do that automatically. So that second step is to make yourself more valuable to others. The third step here, which we've referenced already in the first two, is that you need to know and relate to what others value. This often is something that we assume that just because they're a part of our organization, just because we know of these individuals, that we know what they want. But really, this is the critical part that, that takes a lot of work 
there's no shortcut to knowing and relating to other people or figuring out what they value. And most leaders find that when they're able to engage in this third step, that it's very insightful, that they discover lots of things that they had no idea about before, and that they really enjoy it, that this concept of adding value to other people becomes something that they really enjoy and get a lot out of themselves. It enriches your perspective on whatever you're working on, and uh, obviously adds a lot to them. So even having these conversations, you'll find you'll already to get you'll already get a lot of traction with individuals just because you're sincerely and honestly caring and wanting to know what they value. The fourth guideline that Maxwell describes is one that's based out of his uh, Christian beliefs. And it is this, to do things that God values. Maxwell articulates an inherent value to doing the things that God values. And when you align those types of things, the things that you do with the things that God wants, Maxwell says that this is um, intrinsically good. It is intrinsically influential and it strikes a chord with individuals that you would like to serve. So by knowing the things that God values and figuring out ways to do them, you can add value to other people. And the assumption here is that the things that God values would be in alignment with other things that people value themselves. So now we start by applying the law of addition. The first way Maxwell suggests that we apply the law of addition is by having the attitude of a servant. As you saw in those four guidelines, it's impossible to even start the progress towards applying these things unless you really have a servant's attitude. First, he says, evaluate your response to the needs of others. So first thing you would need to do is to figure out what other people around you need or want. There's a variety of ways you could create this type of list, but what you need to do with it is to look at the things that other people need or want and then evaluate how you respond to it. Do you resist those types of things? Are you all for it? Do you find that you don't get or understand the desires of other people? If so, figuring out what is the root of that resistance or acceptance to those things in your own life would be the first thing for you to really adopt the attitude of servanthood in the first place. Second, you need to perform small acts of service. That means start doing it. Go out there and once you have a mindset and an awareness of kind of servant attitude and aligning yourself towards the desires and needs of others, you need to actually start behaving like a servant. So find small acts of service and don't just do one, do a bunch. What you want to do is start to create a habit and expectation in your own life that you will, by default, serve other people. Be careful to do good without seeking credit. A lot of times we can negate the effects of this servant attitude by reaping the rewards of attention and accolades of other people because of the, because of the good deed. So when you do something, when you serve somebody, make sure that you're not going out there and kind of shouting from the rooftops and, hey, look, I just did something good. I'm very humble. That'll defeat the whole purpose in the first place. And of course, look for unique opportunities to serve others. And what I mean by unique opportunities is opportunities to serve different people in different ways from what you normally do. For a lot of us, the concept of servant leadership is not a foreign idea. And if we want to expand our ability to apply the law of addition, we need to find different types of people and to serve them in different types of ways to continue growing as a leader. The next way to apply it is to assess the values of others. And you need to start by quantifying the values of other people close to you. You could do this by simply asking them what they value and making a list. So if you were to identify maybe three or four people that are close to you and just asking them, hey, what are your top 10 things that you value the most? Then rate yourself, compare how much you value the things that are most important to them. You could use any type of scale, but what you'll see is that some things you share high values with other people, but there are other things that they may value that you don't. And so what you'll need to do is to spend time with those who value things that are different than you. Trust that their values, their concepts, all these things will kind of rub off on you and you'll start to pick up what is important to them in their own life. That'll help you assess the value of others so that you can do a better job applying the law of addition. And finally, you're going to want to integrate the value addition into your life. Add value to people who are closest to you. This is the easiest place to start. You're already spending time with them. You already have access to them. And so for you to be with them is going to be the easiest way for you to start adding value to others around you. 
Once you feel like you have a good grip on that, go ahead and feel free to expand your value add attitude towards other in your personal and professional environment. And consider how you might serve groups as well as individuals. So there we have it. That's the law of addition according to John Maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership.